Hi, I'm Maximus, and this is a video for all those players that are ready to take it to the next level. So if you are new, please check out my beginner's guide first. The link will be in the description. Let's start with prone. Not only does it help you hide, when recovering your stamina, it drains less food and water by roughly about 50%, which is very helpful when it comes to using less resources. Say you're on a ledge in a cave, or very high up, and it's on your right. The default to dismount is on your right hand side. Simply hold left on your left thumbstick, or A for PC players, then dismount and you'll dismount onto your left. Surprisingly people still do not know about placing torches onto saddles. Simply make a torch, place it into your dino's inventory, and then move it onto the saddle. And there you go. Ok next we have ways to increase your movement speed. So with ASA stopping you from leveling up moving speed, we have to think of different ways to increase it. So you're reliant on focal chili, which when consumed will increase your movement speed by 25% and your crafting speed by 100% for a short time. Or you can consume battle tartar, which will increase movement speed by 50% as well as a 60% increase in melee damage, but be aware of its side effects. Now the toilet. Not only does it give you a small XP boost and fertilizer, there is now a way to instantly spoil meat. Once you have the toilet set up, place all the meat in its inventory and it's time to go. Poop in the toilet and flush. And now all the meat is spoiled. An underestimated feature is the pheromone dart. Fire one of these into other players, wild or tamed dinos will make all wild creatures attack them. So yes, a nice trolling tool. However, it's useful to get Trudons to attack high XP tames such as baby gigas. Beer does more than just taming Calithotheriums. When consumed, your character will be intoxicated and will increase insulation, damage resistance, the increase of 40% melee damage and reduce your water consumption. But this will rapidly drain your stamina and when it's over you'll be hung over for a minute, keeping your stamina at zero. You can make custom recipes for you and your dino. First you need to craft a note and press cancel. Now place the note in the cooking pot. Press disable auto craft and now open up the options. Now you can choose whether it's a food or a drink give it colours and name it. Different food items have different values, so you can play around with it yourself or you can just look it up online to find the combos you want. Increasing your crafting skill improves the item. Dinos will only consume stamina only items, so potentially you could keep a flyer up in the air for a much longer time. The top tier kibble, extraordinary kibble, can be used for most tames. Whether it's large or small, passive or knockout, obviously it won't work on tames that require a special mechanic. Giant bee honey is not only an ingredient and fishing bait, it can be used to lure dinos and calm down the leads for a short time, but don't hang about. A lot of people doesn't even know the lasso exists. Firstly, you'll have to put a saddle on the equus or the unicorn. Then in its inventory, using fiber and thatch, you can make one. You can then equip it in your inventory or hotbar. It can only be used while riding the equus or unicorn. It will put you in first person mode only. You can drag conscious or unconscious dinos. It has a random list of dinos that it can drag. Surprisingly, a rhino can be one of them, but handily a Quetzal, which is ideal if it's landed in the water or near danger. Just be aware it can be unlassoed quite easily. A smart way of collecting rare resources can be breeding them. For example, breed an Ovis for raw mutton. You can harvest the babies, but for efficiency, Wait for the sacrificial lamb to grow up, pun intended, and claim it, and use a Therizino. I should point out my rates are boosted. For organic polymer, raise the car queue, level a moss chops into organic polymer, and harvest it. You will gain more resources if it's unmounted, but sometimes it glitches and runs away. If so, just mount it when it happens. For some reason, harvesting with a dino inside a cave gathers more resources. As you can see, even with my boosted rates, Outside I'm getting 60 to 90 berries, and even just inside the Swamp Cave, I get 800 to 900 berries a hit. Speaking of the Swamp Cave, aka the XP Cave, it has lethal gas inside, and even more annoyingly, Arthur Pleurers, which can break your armour with its spit. However, while sitting on the tame, if you wear a gas mask and nothing else, you're immune to the gas, and the Arthur Pleurer can't break the mask. Just be aware you still take damage, so be careful. The other armor combinations are gas mask with any three pieces of scuba and ghillie, or just a gas mask and ghillie. 
you may have noticed the heart symbol above wild or tame dinos, when a male and a female are close to each other. This doesn't just mean they're in breeding range. Wilds will help defend each other. When it comes to tames, the female will produce unfertilized eggs faster. But the biggest boost is that the dinos receive bonus for the damage and damage resistant of about 33%. This is handy for your boss fights or tackling dangerous underwater artifact caves. I recommend a high level pair of basilos with decent saddles as they have high health, they are shock resistant and a two-zo can't grab them. While we're underwater, if you're foolish enough to be swimming underwater without any tames, keep a chair on you. This is handy if you run out of stamina. Simply place the chair down, sit in it and watch the stamina replenish. Now you're reaching a point where the levels are slowing down. One way of speeding up your XP is the grinder. Not only does it grind unwanted weapons, armor and saddles, you can grind stone to flint and wood to thatch. Simply fill the grinder with wood, grind away and watch that XP bar fly up. Another way is to kill baby dinos. They have the same XP as adults. It's also the best way to level up dinos as well. Baby gigas give the most XP. If you've run out of engram points, change the way you want your character stats, want to temporarily change your stats, for a boss fight or to boost crafting skill, make a mind wipe and consume it. It will reset all your stats and engrams. It will not reset your tech engrams, and on official servers, you can only use it once per 24 hours in real time. In single player, there's an option for unlimited use. So I mentioned mind wiping and putting all your points into crafting skill. You do this if you want to improve upon any blueprints. Anytime you craft a blueprint with any points into crafting skill, it'll give a random bonus chance of improvement. The more points you have into crafting skill, the bigger and more likely the crafting bonus will be. Now breeding. This will be brief and to the point. There are smarter people out there to explain mutations in detail, such as Concon. I'll leave the link below. Breeding is key to beat the bosses. Not only can you increase the dino levels, if you imprint on a dino, it will increase its stats. But if you personally 100% imprint a dino, it will have 30% increased damage and damage resistance to you personally when mounted. Improving the dino stats will improve the dino's levels. To do this, for example, if the dino has taken the better health from the female and the better stamina from the male, the level should go up depending on the other stats it has inherited, such as food and weight, etc. So if you're lucky enough to get all the best stats, you'll have a better stat dino, plus a better base level. You can also get random mutations of colors and or stats, which can also help. But like this baby Ovis, you can get babies that inherit the worst stats, hence why this one's level has dropped compared to its parents. To help with imprinting, most babies can fit in the Procoptodon's pouch. This is helpful because it can improve the infinity of any imprint. Small dinos can stay in the pouch until it's grown up, but the rest usually pop out around about 30% of growth. When imprinting, if it asks for kibble, you can use a higher tier level kibble as a replacement. For example, if it asks for basic kibble, you can use any kibble from simple kibble upwards. If you have an imprint and you cannot provide it, you can re-roll it with a cryopod. Stay in range of a cryo fridge, if you're in PvP, remember there will be a cooldown time, and when you're ready, throw it out. It will change the imprint at random, so you could get the same imprint again. Just roll it again until it changes to what you have or need. Another way of collecting higher quality loot outside of caves or the ocean drops is fishing. The higher the quality of the fish rod, the better the loot, but that's not the only factor. Fish size, not level, matters as well. The bigger the fish, the better the prize is. You can use sap for small fish, leech blood for small to medium fish, saber tooth salmon and piranhas, and giant bee honey for all sizes up to 2.4 for all three of them. Use the fishing rod, you must sit on a pelican horse in the water, a chair or a bench. Cast your reel in and wait. Once you finally have a bite, it's a mini game of pressing the right button and it will finish once you've reeled it in or you have failed. Any sane person should be using a deodon. It heals your dinos, but it drains through its food very quickly. A trick to instantly fill its food bar is to put food in its inventory, then go out on render and come back and the food bar is full. If you find yourself in this tricky situation when the pump action shotgun is needed, reloading it in third person is far quicker. Dino groups are very handy for boss fights. This is where you can split your dinos into groups for whistle commands. You can have up to 10 groups, 
you can rename them and assign individual dinos and creatures and you can assign individual dinos in creatures by dino or multiples of the same dinos in classes in group. So to add creatures or classes you need to go to the dino, open the option wheel, go to the modify and order in groups, choose add creature or class and then the group number which you can also see the group name. So I put some land dinos in group 1 and some flyers in group 2. Now using the numpad and the numpad only, press 1 and you can see that group 1 is highlighted and only group 1 will listen to my whistle commands. Press in 1 again will set it back to all dinos. Now I press 2 and now only the flyers will listen to me. Finally, when you've managed to unlock the tech dedicated storage by beating the beta dragon, you can pull all items from them without the need of you manually moving them. For example, here I'll craft the flak armor with no resources in the smithy. If you found this helpful, hit that like button. If you want more from me, hit subscribe. If you want to stalk me, hit notifications. Cheers and gone.